So the first thing is to make sure that we understand the requirements, that the requirements are clear enough and yes. start breaking it down into tasks, right? I like to create like checklists. Even before writing code without thinking about tests, I just try to understand the requirements, make sure that everything is clear. So let's see. As a flight instructor, I want to be able to customize a lesson plan for a student. So what is a lesson plan? As you said, it's a collection of maneuvers. Correct. Okay. So from a list of flight maneuvers, I can select different ones. So it's like a, almost like a filter, right? There's a lot of maneuvers, like all of them, and you select like one, two, or three, and that's the lesson plan for the day. Yeah. So you can select different ones to add to today's lesson plan. And when finished with the selection, I can press done and be taken to a different page I can share with my student. Okay. So you already wrote some, some tasks here, right? A checklist of things. So get all flight maneuvers and display them on screen. Then user selects maneuvers, hits done button, Okay, selected flight maneuvers are saved. Saved where? Probably on device. Okay, locally, let's say. Then the selected flight maneuvers are displayed on a new screen with any additional information. What is this additional information here? So I was thinking when you display the flight maneuvers, you only have the name. But once you select it and it goes in the lesson plan, it would have a little bit more information, maybe a description, something. Okay. So we are. So this is the process of refining, clarifying the yeah. requirements, right? And usually you have this conversation with a business analyst, someone that is writing the requirements in your business. So we are finding out that displaying them on screen is like a list of maneuver. Is this how we spell maneuver? <laughs> yes maneuver names, right? So it's just the name, like just the name. And when you select them, you can then see more information about the maneuvers. Right. In another screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is a vital step here, right? Because th this is what's missing. You know, this is what's going to make the testing process feasible. And uh, you're going to be able to uh, you know, uh, like progress with uh, with test driven development, like making sure you take some time to think about these uh, steps, right? Like refine your requirements. And this is, by the way, this is probably not going to be done by anyone else. Like you're uh, the one who's going to have to ask a, a bunch of questions to, you know, make sure that you have all the information you need. All right. So we need to start asking questions like get all flight maneuvers, like from where? From an API, from a local database, from a predefined list? Yeah, let's say they're going to be on an API on the back end somewhere. Mm -hmm. From an API back end. An external system, right? That can be even another set of requirements on how to fetch these and there will be some kind of schema json or xml there'll be some kind of communication that with this api that this can be decided later because there's a lot to unpack here it, it seems like just a few steps but like you can break these steps into more steps into more steps and that's the the breakdown of tasks i'm talking about because if there are too many things to think about at once it's very hard to know where to start but if you start breaking it down into smaller tasks discrete pieces of functionality, then you can build one at a time and then you compose them, right? That they'll make much easier to develop and test the, the software by breaking it down into smaller discrete pieces of functionality, like getting all flight maneuvers can be a specific functionality that can be built and tested in isolation. And you can use it regardless if you're showing on a screen where you're going to select things or if you're going to put in a database to be used later on and so on, like you can get a flight, all flight maneuvers. That's a discrete piece of functionality. Doesn't matter how it's going to be used, right? You can build it in a way that it's decoupled from the user interface, it's decoupled from what's going to, what are you going to do with the flight maneuvers once you get them? It's just a piece of functionality that gets 
flights from somewhere. The same thing, the UI, like displaying a list of maneuvers or a list of names on the UI. It doesn't matter where the names came from. It could be from a list, a predefined list, hard coded in the app. It could be from a database. It could be from the network. If you build it as discrete piece of functionalities, you can build them independently and then you compose them. You have a component that can show a list of names and then you have a component that can load the list of names from the yeah. web and then you put them together and now you are showing things on the screen that came from the web but if we try to think of all of this as one component and one piece of functionality it's much harder to start but if you break it down it's like let's solve this one problem at a time one problem is to get flights from on the back end. Another problem is to show a list of names on the screen. Another problem is to select items on the screen. Another problem is to save a list of things locally to a database and so on. They can all be split into discrete pieces of functionality that can be built independently and composed later to create the, the overall feature we're trying to build. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, so you kind of think of them as little separate modules. doesn't matter how it all works. Let's just say it works by magic for now. You just want the ability to, like in the first one, get the flight maneuvers. doesn't matter how you did it. You just want to make sure they're there for you to use. Yes. OK. But it requires a little bit of planning, because if you just build all these pieces of discrete functionalities without a plan, Maybe they're not going to, they will not compose well later on. They will not work well together, right? So that's where design comes in, right? So first step is to understand the requirements. And the second step is to quickly design or sketch a plan 